I know that I've known you for 35 years, and I know that you are a, a, a genius in the sense that you have a way of finding an interesting image somehow. You can walk into a room which you've never been before and point your camera exactly at something in that room that makes a beautiful picture. This is something that's always struck me about your videos. Mm -hmm. You have a way of making video, which I love, because most of the so-called video art is just a lot of uh, flashing, uh, quick movements and virtuoso special effects and everything. I hate that. What I like is to have a beautiful picture that I can look at for 10 minutes. And that's what you do in your videos. Classical tradition is one of, of dynamic change. So I see myself as both belonging to a, a, a quite an old tradition, but uh, one which changes constantly. And if it doesn't change, it dies. So I see myself actually as, as being in the mainstream of the classical tradition, because I am doing what Bach and Beethoven did. I'm creating a new music, doing something new with the tradition. So ever since I can remember, that's what I do. I wanted to be like Beethoven. I remember that very clearly when I was seven years old. I, wanted, I thought, I want to be like that guy. that Beethoven found a way of notating music in a very, very precise way, so that everything is precisely defined, but which at the same time allows for the possibility of multiple interpretation, which can be very different and are all equally interesting. And this is what... Uh, uh, this is why his music continues to be performed, generation after generation. Uh, performers find new ways of performing this music, which are equally valid and interesting. And it has not yet uh, been exhausted. And he was particularly gifted at this... Uh, he had tricks of the trade.
you examine carefully Beethoven's uh, piano sonatas, you find there are many, many, many instances in which, for instance, something that he wrote on page 3 comes back on page 13 in a slightly different way. Uh, the same chord, but written in a slightly different way, with a very, very small difference between the, fir the first chord and the repetition, 13 pages, 10 pages later, you would think that it's a mistake, or just a careless uh, uh, omission, where he wrote down something that he thought was the same, but he didn't check it any carefully and so forth. I think, no. I think uh, there are so many instances of this happening in Beethoven. He puts in a little dirt. He changes things. It's not, it's not clean. on purpose because uh, what that is is like um, it's like a, a, a it gives it a quality of spontaneity as though the music were improvised his his writing his written music sounds improvised because that's exactly what happens in an improvisation you're playing fooling around you find something oh that's nice I think I'll play that again and, and you play it again, but of course you can't quite play exactly the same thing. A, it's a little bit different the second time. And, and, and uh, this is, uh, belongs to the nature of uh, improvisation, and it's what make, makes improvised music sound alive. That it's, uh, it's never the same. It's always changing, just like life is never the same. It's, there's always some, even though you may do the same thing day after day, it's always slightly different on Tuesday than it was on Monday. And uh, uh, Beethoven, uh, I think, was particularly interested in this question of writing down improvisation, his, especially in his piano sonatas and especially in his late piano works. <laughs> Some years ago, it struck me that um, one of the difficulties that I have with the classical uh, with classical forms is that they do not resemble real life. Mm -hmm. uh, if I, if, and if I want to describe real life, I cannot write music, uh, which is uh, like, for instance, although Mozart's music is very beautiful. It does not resemble real experience. It's a kind of utopian. It's very symmetrical. It's, it's built like a, 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 it's constructed like a, a, a syllogism. You have a, a section and then a B section and then an A section again. So it's like a pyramid. It's a triangle. It's like architecture. It's beautiful and symmetrical, but it does not resemble real life. Well, I wanted to 
find was a way of describing the experience of, of my own interior experience. You know, when, I, when I examine what's going on in, in, inside my head, what, what I hear and uh, what I perceive is, is not beautiful, systematic forms. Not at all. It's a big mess. It's like a, a clogged up toilet. I have uh, all, it's just a big mess. I, I can't understand anything. It's uh, pieces of shit coming up for a minute and then disappearing. And, uh, uh, and, and, and the more I thought about it, I thought, well, actually, it seems I think most of the most of human experience is, is no order at all. to write, find a way of writing music to express this. This idea that really life as it goes on around me is something uh, that I do not understand. It just happens. And I cannot find reasons why it should happen the way it does. It just happens. And so I, I wanted to find a way of writing this down. And uh, so I've been uh, experimenting with different ways of letting the music write itself and uh, but in music for uh, it, it, it struck me that uh, the tradition of written music of course improvised music is something else but in the tradition of written music there is a kind of taboo of the uh, of the irrational the irrational is not allowed and i think that becomes from the sacred tradition uh, written music or classical, but classical tradition is really coming from uh, the sacred tradition. It's a kind of theology. And so the devil is not allowed. Even though the, uh, it may not have a religious content, composers are still somehow linked to this theological tradition where the devil is not allowed. The composers took on another mask, something like mathematicians or scientists. They, 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 they're, they're, the Stockhausen and, and, and this generation, they were like wearing laboratory coats and talking like scientists, as though they were talking about nuclear physics or, or something like that, or mathematics. So the, the, uh, the, the, um, the mask was the rational mask. Uh, and and uh, even John Cage uh, did not write down simply what came into his head. He had to have some kind of system, which was based on uh, the I Ching or something, but uh, chance methods. And, and it's very, very hard to find any composers who simply uh, wrote like something, Ecriture Automatique, something like that. There are a few, like uh, I think Morton Feldman is one. So I wanted to find a, see if it was possible to, to somehow escape from that. And I have not s totally succeeded. In a way, this is, a, uh, this is an enterprise which is uh, doomed to failure. It cannot be really done. But uh, in, in a few cases, I think I've been able to, um, to make a... Uh, to, to, to get to, to get close to what I'm what I'm trying to do. <laughs>
that uh, especially in playing the piano uh, it's it's better not to be aware of certain things mm -hmm. it's like your foot what the foot does with the pedal Horowitz called the pedal the soul of the piano mm -hmm. this is a very very uh, perceptive statement because of course you're not aware of your soul mm -hmm. it's unconscious and it's much better that way if you're aware of what your foot is doing then you won't be you, it'll be all you won't do it right and it's the same thing with the rest of the body. If, if, uh, 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 if you can do something, if your fingers can do something without your being aware of it, then it's much better. Then you've saved time and energy. It it's costs time and energy to be aware of something. It should only be necessary if it can't be done uh, any other way. It would be much better if you could just play the piano in your sleep without being aware of anything at all. That sometimes happens in my dreams that, that way. But, uh, uh, and, and sometimes in concert, too, I, I find that I'm half asleep. I've noticed that on the stage. I suddenly realize that I'm dreaming, daydreaming about something which has nothing to do with the music. Mm. It's, it's quite interesting. Or you are just so into the music that uh, you don't think about how you, what you are doing and how you are doing it. It's consciously was prepared and then what the action itself is so complex that any kind of conscious intervention of the conscious mind would would ruin it so it, it has to be you have to be unconscious so you just give up the, the mind in that uh, moment and you become pure body 